Hey ladies, thank you so much for checking out this week's weekly reading. So this week I'm doing something a little special. So for one, let's have a little celebration. I um, just recently got a tripod for my camera and so I'm able to create videos where you can see my face and you can see the cards. So that's really, really exciting for me personally. I don't know what that's gonna, how that's gonna impact you, but I know that I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I just wanted to celebrate that. Um, but today's reading is all about our inner masculine energy. Um, if you caught my blog um, this week, um, it just came out on Friday. Um, I am celebrating and honoring the women who are raising the new wave of masculine energy. But something that frequently goes ignored and unacknowledged on this path or that gets brushed under the rug until you're absolutely forced to address it is our inner masculine energy. And so um, today's reading is going to be about where we are as a feminine collective with our masculine energy. I sat, I prayed over the cards. Um, I kind of infused it with, um, you know, um, letting me, uh, letting Lady Venus and Sanat Kumara know that I wanted them to be present and to pull the cards that would resonate with um, the people or the women, um, just because it's typically women who catch my videos, um, what would resonate with them the most. Um, and so um, they feel pretty powerful, to be quite honest. They're, the cards are feeling a little happy that I'm, be, I'm asking this of them. Now, I did pull out um, the card. I handpicked this card. This is the Emperor card. Um, it does represent the masculine energy within tarot. I mean, as do all the kings, but the Emperor is that um, totally balanced and harmonized masculine energy. And so because I want that to be all the energy of the reading, I've pulled him out and he's going to kind of govern. I'm gonna do a Celtic cross spread. I do them quite frequently. Um, I just love it. It's the most comprehensive spread that, um, and really it's classic. Every tarot reader I know uses it and has used it in the past. Um, so the masculine energy, um, what we see here is a lot of red in him, which red is the color of passion and fire, um, um, just a lot of power. Um, and he does have um, the Aries ram sitting on either side of his throne. So um, he's kind of mastered his impulses and his tendencies to try and overpower. The masculine, when in harmony, knows that the best way to lead is with a by a plan, is by tapping into your intuition as opposed to your impulse. Um, so like I said, um, so this is gonna be the, the issue card or what we're looking to address um, within this spread. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started shuffling. We'll see what comes out. There we go. <laughs> Just happens like that sometimes. Um, like that too. Um, so this is a 10 card reading and if anything in this resonates, go ahead, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, whoa, um, post a link so you can book a personalized reading. You know, I'm really grateful. Um, over the past week, I had a couple of, um, a couple of members of my tribe that said, you know, Karen, could you post like a donation link or, um, you know, um, some asked when I was gonna start charging for, um, Nope, I, <laughs> ooh, um, that's an interesting one that I just pulled out there. Um, and so I'm gonna post two links. One is the opportunity to, um, okay, book a personalized reading using this spread, the Celtic Cross, it's $55. Um, the other reading, um, the other link will be to my PayPal where if this resonates and you want to kind of keep the energetic exchange um, balanced, then you are by all means welcome to. Um, so let's get going. So like I said, what we're looking at is the masculine energy within us as the divine feminine. And so the obstacle or kind of what we're we're coming up against that's really blocking us from di diving headfirst into balancing this energy. We have here the King of Pentacles. And so here he is having mastered his abundance. What we're feeling like when we look at this card, once again, there's that Aries Ram. So he's another masculine energy. Some of the current masculine energies in our lives and our world are actually um, blocking us. Some meaning to, others 
unwill or unknowingly. And so what we're looking to address specifically is how the current masculine energy is kind of taking care of us is what I'm feeling. What I'm kind of hearing here is that we are being um, taken care of or we're, we're seeking out um, needs, our needs to be met from the masculine. And we have to be able to meet our own before we can really rise into a full and divine outer union with another individual. Um, and so we might have people in our lives or we ha might have individuals in our lives who feel um, like they have to take care of us. I know this has been the case previously um, in my own life where I've had people who feel like, oh, Car we have to take care of Ka um, Karen. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's that, but then there's also this, at times in my life, I've also sought out somebody to care for me or take care of me. I'm just going to move those cards over. Um, so you can see them a little bit better. All right. So that's what we have going on here. So this is the thing, um, with that energy, what I'm picking up on is that we aren't fully ready to step into our own masculine energy. There's some hesitation. And so what we have is the four of cups. So here we are being offered opportunities. We're being offered gifts, but we're kind of blind to them or we're not accepting them. And these gifts might be, um, you know, what we might be, um, you know, offered financial opportunities that we hold back from taking um, for whatever reason is kind of where I'm picking up when I see pentacles um, followed by cups. I feel like there's a financial element where um, this is very much about being financially taken care of, um, where we kind of feel like we'll never be able to provide for ourselves alone, at least not in the long run. This is going to resonate for some women, for others, not at all. Take what resonates, leave the rest at the door, okay? Um, but you want to, and you are aware that you are being offered things that you are blocking. You, whether these are your wounds um, that are blocking them or they're kind of keeping you um, or you're keeping things at arm's length because you don't know how receiving them will be but you want to take a look right now at what opportunities what um, gifts whether they be tangible or you know things unseen you're being offered um, many times um, when I was in separation I felt like um, I was being punished like um, I was having um, my person, my counterpart taken from me. And now I am able to accept that those times are a gift because you're able to get clear on your own muck um, and do your own deep digging, your own um, focus on your own soul growth without them constantly triggering you. And so a lot of this is going to speak directly to the twins. I'm sorry, it's hard to navigate to um, people on completely different paths all the time. So like I said, take what resonates, leave the rest at the door, okay? So what this is creating, this um, unwillingness to see and acknowledge the gifts that you've been given unconsciously, it's creating seven of wands energy. And so life is a struggle. Unconscious, you're going to war with yourself. And really what I feel is like, once again, and this is constant, this is not something that I'm picking up on in just this spread. This is kind of the nature of the spiritual beast, so to speak. It is a war between your ego and your intuition. And really addressing that head on, um, I tell my clients all the time, one thing you can really do is get clear on the voice of your intuition. So when I'm speaking from fear, my voice is high pitched, I'm loud. When I'm speaking from intuition, it sounds like it's coming from, from my, my soul. It, there is a very uh, significant contrast between the two things. So taking a look at that, but this is creating this, you know, this inner war, this mental war. And so you aren't able to get the clarity that you need to in order to elevate your masculine. So it's kind of like this, in order to step into your masculine, you need to trust your feminine to do the work that it's been doing. So for a lot of us, we are stepping in, stepping into our power of intuition, of psychic energy, um, you know, telepathic communication, our spiritual gifts, whether they be an ability to read tarot, whether it be, um, you know, there's so many different um, 
so many different things that people are doing. I mean, working the energy of your purpose. So letting your feminine side, which so many of us have really nurtured, and some of us are just kind of completely in our feminine, which is a great thing. I mean, I'm, I would say right now, I'm probably predominantly working in my feminine, but what I'm finding is the more I trust in that energy, the more I can let myself be intuitive, the more I can sit with the emotions that don't feel great, the more I'm able to um, also do the work that is less natural for me, which is the work of the masculine. Okay, so it is about stepping out of um, ego, stepping out of mistrusting your in that that side of you. Um, I'm feeling like if you're watching this, you you know your triggers, you know the wounds. Trust them. Allow yourself to start healing them by not looking for more wounds just yet. I'm sure there. I'm not sure of it, but there's probably many wounds that we're gonna bring to the surface on this path. Um, but allow yourself to just be with what is right now, um, rather than actively looking for uh, for the other ones. Okay, heal what's already come up is what I'm I'm getting. So this is an interesting one because this is the card that's reflective of the past, what has happened, what has served us well, what has brought us to this moment, and it's the card of judgment. And so really, um, when I see this, so first off, um, judgment is the card of synchronicity. So, and you know, when I first started my awakening, I was pulling this card almost three, four times a week. And it was many months later that I learned it's the card of synchronicity. So we all are on this path. We know about the angel numbers. We know about the messages from our guides that's serving us. So some of the things that I find trip us up is when we get into this certain point where we're growing, um, we start getting signs and they can actually um, start to kind of aggravate us because we don't understand what they're saying. So my, my rule of thumb has become that I, I just kind of accept certain signs rather than letting them trigger me more. Like, what are you trying to tell me? Or like, I get it. Like you're around. I just say, you know, thank you angels for your presence. If there's something you are guiding me to do, please speak clearer. Um, and that's the same thing. Um, so if you're having a lot of ear ringing, I'm hearing a lot of that lately from people. Um, what you find, um, you can say that same thing and your ears will stop ringing and your angels will start speaking a lot clearer. Okay, um, so that was the past card, this idea of judgment. Um, also, knowing that you've done this path before, you have lifetimes of training that bring this all through and forward. Um, and it is about, once again, trusting, you know, if you've done the past life regression, if you've done the, the soul searching, the soul journeys, um, take what you've learned. Trust that it's accurate. I know that this is a big thing on the path where you're like, I mean, and I struggle with this as well, um, where you're like, that just feels like something I want to hear and I'm not sure how legitimate, legitimate it is. Um, so just, um, you know, one thing that came through from in my channel a couple of months ago or that I, you know, that, yeah, that came through um, was just trust yourself start trusting yourself for an hour and see how that feels see how it resonates give yourself 24 hours to follow the divine guidance and see what happens i will tell you when i took that advice from my guides the um the shifts in my in that 24 hours were so major that i could no longer ignore the fact that my intuition was pretty spot on um, and i started following it and so things when i think about where i was then and where i am now total shift okay so what's ahead of us um or what's this is the future card so this is um something that we want to be mindful of if we don't do this work if we don't start trusting that feminine energy if we don't start paying attention to what our inner masculine and i'm i'm really stressing that because there's so much out there that's like what is the masculine doing what are they healing why are we working so hard and they're not doing anything um, but I've, re I've encountered so many readings and it's always the same. The masculine isn't aware. The masculine is going through a dark night of the soul. Let them go through that. Okay. Your best bet is to focus on you. Um, and so that was a side note, um, that this next card is kind of, you know, um, bringing that up. 
So when we start to shift this mindset into what can we do for ourselves, how can we turn our focus um, and nurture and be present with our gifts, be present with our spirituality, and step into this providing for ourselves, um, coming back to that Four of Cups, this providing um, for ourselves and that King of Pentacles, um, being whole unto ourselves, um, we limit the possibility of this seven of swords energy, which is, you know, he's got these two swords planted, these two ideas, these two energies firmly planted, and he's kind of um, floating through life a little bit unaware of what has already been planted. He's almost got his eyes, um, well, he does, he has his eyes closed. He's just completely unaware of what's around him. And so when we address these energies, we're going to step out of that. We're going to actually start to see things for what they are. We're going to see the gift of separation. And trust me, like there's a part of my heart that still reacts to that. And that's, that's natural. Um, but this seven energy, so seven is also the number of miracles. And what I think we should focus on is when we are aware, when we're present in our own life, in our own um, union of energy, then we allow ourselves to receive miracles. Like I said, when you start to follow this, um, your manifesting is going to go through the roof. And I've worked with a couple of women this past week. I did, um, I think, three readings where women were saying, I'm really addressing certain aspects of my path that were uncomfortable before. And now I'm manifesting apartments, manifesting clients, um, new love, so many different things. So it's a great... Um, it's a good shift to be mindful of the presence of that inner, that inner balance. And so it's interesting because I said that, um, I actually didn't catch this card that it had come out. Um, so like I said, we started out with the emperor, the masculine, where are we now? So this is the card currently for the feminine collective and it's the empress and she is the divine feminine within the tarot deck. She and the Emperor are considered twin flames within the tarot deck. Um, so just really interesting. So this is what I'm going to tell you. In terms of your feminine energy, you're good. Okay? Keep doing what you're doing. One of the things that came through this morning, actually, for me, because I had this moment where I was like, I'm doing all this. I'm feeling great. But will it be enough for like that big goal that I have set for myself? And what came through was it's absolutely enough. Keep showing up every single day. Don't worry about timelines. Don't worry about when. Show up to the present moment. And that is kind of what I'm feeling from this spread as well is like show up. Do the trusting of your feminine, and I know I'm sounding like a broken book, but it is, or a broken record, um, it is very much um, being echoed in many of the cards. Um, so with the divine feminine, what we see here, or what we're seeing with us now is we are, you know, she's considered pregnant with possibility, kind of the world is her oyster, anything she wants, she can have, anything she has the desire to create, she has everything she need, needs. She has tools, she has confidence, she has the gifts. And so this is where we are right now, okay? We are the embodiment. We are the, you know, we are what we've been waiting for. Um, and so we want to just keep going with that momentum, okay? Like now we're, we're good. You're solid, trust it. Um, and if you need some people in your corner to help you trust, go ahead and join Sisterhood of the Wild Feminine on Facebook, okay? So now let's jump into the guide spot or the, um, the mentor guide energy. And I tell people, this is going to resonate differently for everybody. It might come through in a course or program. It might come through a book, a podcast. It could be somebody that you engage with very quickly in the coffee shop. Um, but the energy, so where your teacher is, knowing that really life is, you know, the journey is the teacher. So it is this five of swords, so five being the number of change. And what we see here is um, this individual who's holding on to his, his, his weapons while other people throw them down and walk away. Um, and so what I see is in this card is the divine mirror. So what is triggering you? What are you holding on to? What wounds, what, um, what, 
you know, vulnerabilities are you holding on to? Now, vulnerability isn't a bad thing, but sometimes um, we, we hold it so close to us and don't let anybody in. So whatever you're holding on to, know that it's pushing what you want away. So it is a digging into of that, that mirror. One of the things you can do is um, notice what somebody is triggering in you. And so I just finished another blog post that's coming up um, on social media behaviors that really lower your vibration. And one of the behaviors that I was thinking about is um, um, this, I've seen a lot of people, um, I've heard a lot of people, I've probably been one of these people that judges somebody before they even know them by their profile picture. Um, you know, I'll say like, oh God, she, or not me, but, or well, maybe me, maybe I have said it. Um, but noticing that when you feel that urge to judge somebody, it is reflection, it is a reflection of you. And what is that calling out for you? What is that stirring for you? Typically low self-worth, low self-love, um, when you feel the need to look at somebody and, and find what's wrong with them because what you're finding wrong with them is likely what you feel is wrong with yourself, okay? So really feeling like you need to take a look at um, who's triggering you, what it's bringing out in you, and then move forward from there. One of the ways that I love to do this is actually through journaling. I love to write. I, everybody knows me. Everybody that knows me knows that I love to write. But I'll write like something that's coming up um, in relation to somebody else or even in relation to myself, and I'll do a deep dive into it. Um, okay, so hopes and fears. This card, um, not surprised to see it here at all. Um, in reverse, it is the Two of Cups. <laughs> so pretty blatant message here, right? So we have the man and woman coming into union. Um, and this is thought to be Archangel Michael. I've heard different interpretations of who this, the lion, the winged lion is, but um, Michael resonates for me. Um, and like I said, this was reversed. I don't tend to read in reverse. I know there was another card that I actually flipped, so I didn't read it in reverse, but I don't remember which one it is. Um, so obviously the hope is divine union with ourselves. That's the goal, right? within ourselves. Before we can find it outside of ourselves, we have to be willing to achieve it within. So be, um, you know, for me, it's the balance of being able to do the work that I'm doing, being able to help women rise into their divinity, ditching spiritual rule books that have kept them small and really unearthing this wild authenticity within themselves. Um, so standing in that purpose, being present, using my feminine energy, using my spiritual gifts, but knowing that I have to also, you know, bring in in order to provide for myself. Um, so not just letting, um, you know, my work be kind of not personally viewing it as a hobby, but really standing in my power within it. Obviously, the flip side, the reversal is that those cups, they're never going to fill. We're never going to achieve this. And you will achieve it. The more you put yourself into this work, the more you will not have your happiness contingent on anybody else. You will find it, you know, they say it's an inside job and that is completely accurate. Um, so that is what I'm picking up from that card that the hope is obviously that divine union for many of you. I know that that is a physical 3D union with a specific counterpart. For many of us, it's divine union within. Um, being able to step in, into our power. And I will say, if you are focused on that outer union, the, there will come a point where you, you decide that um, you have done so, more, so much work on the inside that you know that outer union, one, is an illusion, that you're always in union with your counterpart, um, but you will seek it less. You will need it, crave it, desire it, um, less, we'll say, um, because you are filling up from within, okay? Now, two cards flipped for the outcome. Um, and so what we have are um, some really beautiful energies. Um, I wasn't quite sure how to really, um, you know, fully, fully articulate it, but we have this 
three of pentacles, which is all about spirit, building your spiritual house. So building your divinity is the outcome of this, coming into that union. You know, when we get this, we automatically start working into this, okay? Um, so kind of beautiful um, energy here. But it is about elevating your own divinity. That's the outcome that we're craving. It's about that, you know, beating it. I'm like really kind of beating this. But like that inner union is that spiritual house. Now, the second card that came out was the Knight of Wands, which is very masculine, um, but a lot of manifestation happening in this. So I'm going to tell you from looking at this spread, whereas we have um, the masculine and feminine both present and the outcome card is the two of wands or um, the hopes and fears is two, um, two of cups. Woo. Um, okay, here, this is why two of wands just popped up. So, and then when we see the building of the spiritual house and the power of manifestation, so that two of wands is literally like being, you know, able to have anything, have it all. And you're being encouraged to, uh, to get some clarity on what it is you actually want for yourself. Um, so sitting, setting some very clear and um, maybe even detailed um, intentions or um, goals would serve you right now. Um, figuring out the ways in which you're gonna sit and trust within your intuition. Um, finding out more about the masculine energy, feeling where you stand with it, and then diving into how you can elevate it, how you can bring it up, okay? So I do hope that you enjoyed this reading for your inner masculine energy. Um, I'm gonna post those links, like I said, down in the description of the video. Please consider booking a personal reading if you wanna dive deeper into how you specifically can elevate your masculine. Um, and also, like I had mentioned, that there will be a donation link. But also, I'm going to pop a link to Sisterhood of the Wild Feminine. Come on in. Join our tribe. Um, we are high vibe, high energy, um, really loving and supportive women in there who just want the best for everybody. Okay? So, so much love, so much gratitude. Have a beautiful weekend or week, uh, depending on when you get this, okay? See you next week.